Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Uh, today we're over at the Tabletop CP workbench and I wanted to just show you guys some uh, pretty sweet new vehicles that I've gotten from friends lately. Um, these are 3D printed and they're very nice so we're going to take a closer look at some of these. So the first one we'll look at is this A9 cruiser tank. Uh, this was sent to me by a friend of the channel Scott Driscoll via OTP Terrain. They're a company uh, that out of Australia and they do really nice 3D printed stuff. Scott has a bunch of their stuff and he was raving about it to me and he but liked it so much that he's had them send me one and here it is. So thank you to uh, Scott and OTP Terrain. I'll put their information in the um, description of this video if you want to check them out. Like I said they are in Australia but shipping wise really not that bad and the low cost of the vehicle will offset any shipping costs so we'll take a closer look at this tank. So it comes with two turrets a uh, close support turret and a two pounder turret and it comes with two forward facing machine guns so the games I play bolt action and chain of command um, this will be usable in both of those games uh, real quick just some of the stats for it uh, in chain of command yeah, where is that I had it here it is chain of command it's uh, armor 2 I'm sorry yeah armor 2 AP5 for the two pounder and HE4 for the two pounder which is interesting. I don't know if that's a typo. Close support versions Armor 2, AP1, and HE4, which sounds more reasonable for a close support tank than for HE4 for a two pounder. Uh, but then there's also a little um, issue that arose that they didn't have any actual HE shells for these close support tanks in France at the time, so apparently only smoke was able to be fired from the close support version and uh, there's always a debate going on, on about how do you do direct fire smoke from a tank and chain of command. The eternal debate. Um, uh, let's see here, bolt action wise, uh, there's the same thing, got a close support version and a uh, AT version. AT version is a light AT gun. Only seven armor, which is interesting, which is armored car level armor. 125 points for both and the close support version has a light howitzer. And the two machine guns um, in bolt action are covering the front arc. In chain of command, usually if you have dual machine guns like this, they don't fire full effect. You usually combine both to fire maybe eight dice. So that is the uh, A9 Cruiser. Very nice. Um, looking at it a little bit closer, I mean, the quality on these are amazing. Oop, there's hardly any line. I mean, there are lines when you look at it closely. But from distance, you can't really see any lines. A little bit on the turret, but I mean, nothing like the early 3D prints that I used to have, or I still have them, but when this technology was first starting and I first got my vehicle, the vehicles were pretty rough looking. There was big, big lines and just, it, it was pretty bad. Um, I did basically no cleanup on this at all. Uh, I washed it off with soap and water and I primed it. I didn't do any sanding or anything and it's, really well done I mean I don't know how good my lighting is here but you can see all the detail it's got shovel it's got pry bar uh, this one I don't know it's stuck in here I think I might have got some glue on it or something but anyway so yeah I mean the quality on these is great it's got the two turrets and for a very reasonable price as well so if you're looking for early war vehicles and here in Australia or anywhere in the world give these guys a, a look OTP terrain so now we'll take a look at the other vehicles I got so these vehicles I got from friend of the channel Sam Smith um, he's part of the Facebook group and he's has a 3d printer and he contacted me one day and asked me if I'd be interested in some uh, early war vehicles that seems to be his specialty at the moment so I said sure and he sent me these and I was just blown away by I mean how great they look. Obviously this one's painted already. I did paint this one for the uh, Abbeville campaign that we are currently playing. But I mean the it just looks so good. The barrel of this thing is 3D printed. How is that even possible? I mean it's perfectly round. There's a gap in there. It's got the little rivets. This one of all of them this one has the most lines on it that's are the most obvious. 
But Sam was saying that has something to do with trying to keep the scale of the gun and everything. It has to, it, that was the way it had to be. But even then, yeah, zoomed up on it, you can see them. But from distance, it's harder to tell. I mean, it's got the gun in there with the wheel. I mean, this is so cool. So that is the Panzer I Bison. And that thing is a beast in both games. Um, and bolt action, it's 155 points, heavy howitzer. And that is, well, probably the most devastating weapon in the entire game of bolt action. In chain of command, it's uh, armor 2, AP8, HE13, which is a beast, 7 points. It is slow and unreliable and has an open body, though. So, it's got its downside, but if, it, if you can get a, a shot off with it, you're going to do some damage. Then of course the three Brens. Each one of these are the early war Brens. I think that's kind of what got Sam uh, started with these was when he saw me with my later war Brens probably standing in. Um, he decided maybe I needed some actual early war Brens. So here they are. And you can see they got two crewmen each. And again the lines are well very hard to see. I mean it's just amazing to me how well, these how good these look compared to the early days of 3D printers uh, that I saw. Three of them. Uh, they got the Bren, or I guess it could be a boys even if you wanted. And then the last one is the I have to look this up. French FMC or FCM 36. So this is a little French tank. Um, take a look at this, and this one is I mean. Probably the best, I think. It's, it's just so smooth. The lines are so close together. Uh, Sam was saying that you know this. He puts it on the highest setting. It takes like twice as long, but I mean it's worth it in the end with the results. Look at this. I mean it's. You can barely even tell that's a 3D printed vehicle. I can't. Uh, I mean the detail. Look at the detail of this little um, pickaxe here. It's just. Real thin. I mean, everything is stands out. It's not melted in or blended in. Just super nice. I mean, look at the Coax MG. Even it's just a very fine machine gun. Real thin. So yeah, I mean, it's really well done. Um, and I really didn't even know anything about this tank. This is one he just kind of sent to me. I didn't ask for it, uh, but I figured he figured I needed one. So here it is. So I will paint it up and use it eventually as I do with every model I get. So let's see, in bolt action, it's kind of a lame tank. It's got a low velocity light anti-tank gun. So a plus three pen, which is, well, basically the same as a heavy uh, auto cannon. It does have eight armor though, so it's a light tank and has a coax machine gun and it is 105 points. Uh, chain of command, it's a little better. Armor five, AP three, HE three, which is very mediocre, but I mean, what do you expect? It's probably some like post World War One design or something. I don't. I don't know really much about this tank. It has a coax machine gun. It's slow and it's four support points. I think I got those stats off the uh, consolidated arsenal. But anyway, so these are the uh, 3D prints I got. I just wanted to show them off a little bit, show that how great of work these people are doing these days um, with these 3D printers. It's quite amazing. Um, so. Just to wrap it up here, uh, OTP Terrain out of Australia. I'm going to put their info down in the uh, description. Uh, and Sam, he is not selling these. Um, he doesn't have a business or anything like that. He's just a hobbyist and he helps his friends out. So he's not selling. So I wouldn't bother him uh, asking him to make any tanks for you. Or I'd appreciate it if no one did. Um, maybe one day he said he might, but not at the moment. So. That is it for this video. Um, again, thank you to Scott, OTP Terrain, and Sam for the amazing vehicles, and I hope to have them on the table soon. So I'll see you guys next time.